how to find and remain motivated. Most of the time, we do not reach our goals because we do not anticipate how hard it's going to be and all the barriers that are going to come our way. Most of us lose motivation because we experience small setbacks which we do not foresee. So it is important for us to first of all set realistic expectations but also plan for setbacks. So today I'm going to talk to you about the seven essential and proven ways that you can use to find motivation and also to keep your motivation high for a long time. So one of the first things you'll need to do is commit. Commit to your goal, whatever your goal is, whether it's weight loss, whether it's trying to live healthier or cleaner, maybe living disease free, managing your condition or even preventing a health condition, whatever your goal is, you need to first commit to it 100%. So you need to keep two sets of goals. One is a long term and a short term. Right now, I'm going to talk to you about the long term. If you want to know what is a realistic goal weight for a long term and a short term, then you can actually watch my previous video, which I launched last week. And I'll put the link to it in the show notes below. Now, regardless of how big or how small your goal is, you need to choose a goal which you believe, which you feel you have a potential to achieve. Having the belief that you will achieve your goal is one of the biggest fuels for your motivation. Even if it's bigger than the calculation I mentioned, it doesn't matter. As long as you in your heart know that you can achieve it, you want that to be your goal. A social psychologist Uh, Timothy Wilson actually said that you what you want to do is think about your life in the future when you think of a goal when you make your goal you want to turn imagine that every single thing that you wanted has gone as well as it possibly could you've worked really hard and you've succeeded in accomplishing all of your life goals whatever those are for you Think of that as the realization of your life dreams, okay? So what I want you to do is actually take a few seconds or maybe five minutes, close your eyes and envision a life where everything has gone the way you want it. A positive future where everything was achieved, at least the goals that you've set out for yourself has achieved. Close your eyes, look at how things are looking. What are you wearing? Where are you? What are you doing? How are you feeling? Now that you've thought about it, connect it to something meaningful. A lot of goals fail because they are not meaningful enough. Either they're too big, sometimes they're too small maybe, but they're not meaningful and substantial enough. So what I would like you to do is to tie to something that's substantial for you. It could be a religious purpose. It could be help reason whatever pumps you whatever excites you you want to connect that you always want to think of a higher purpose a bigger purpose for your goal the reason why you want to make it meaningful is because you want to make it worth striving and struggling for because no matter what it's going to get hard it's going to get hard you have to put a lot of effort and work into it so if you don't have a goal strong with a strong purpose enough, it's gonna fail. If you're gonna do it half-heartedly, I can almost guarantee that you will not be able to sustain that motivation. Now that you've imagined your future with the meaningful vision that motivates you to attain these goals, now the key is to actually ingrain these in writing. So you don't want to just write it down on a piece of paper, but you want to write it down as if it has already happened in the future. So when you think about how you're feeling in the future where you've accomplished whatever it is that you've accomplished, write it down like you're in the future and you're writing down that what you've accomplished. So let me give you a few examples. So one thing you could do, say in the future, 
you're writing this down and this is what you're going to write down today i've lost 10 kilograms and i'm going to the gym five days a week for the past six months now this is yourself in the future but you're going to write it down today because you want to envision how it feels like because you've already envisioned now you have to write these things down it is important important to put ink to paper to actually write this down there's numerous studies that prove that writing things down is one of the biggest biggest not only motivator but biggest cause for success so you have to write these down they don't have to be something that you're gonna have to keep reading and looking into no you just have to write them down it doesn't matter if you see them again ever even if you throw the paper out after you've written it doesn't matter as long as you've written it it's very important so another example of a goal could be you know uh, for a lot of women it could be something like oh i've been mistaken for being a model many times lately you know anything that you feel is important to you you're gonna have to write that down try to connect it to something higher so maybe these these both both of these examples are not giving you a substantial meaningful result let me show you a few other examples which have more meaning so something like i'm healthy and have been taken off of my medication isn't that a goal that you want to look forward to could be another one if you are someone who's trying to conceive and trying to get pregnant your goal could be I have a happy home and I have a newborn in my arms. Will that be something that motivates you? So I want you to think about your future, write it down as if you've already accomplished that. Now it's very, very, very important that you write this down every single day without fail. Some people say you should write it down every night before going to bed. And some people say you should do it every morning as soon as you wake up. I would say do it both. You know, whatever fits you later, we can figure that out. But for now, do it every morning and every night. This is not your to-do list. This is your goals. And just remember, you do not want to be low or depressed when you're writing them. A lot of people write their goals down when they feel low and depressed and they feel like, oh, I want this in my life. I want that in my life. No, you want to be pumped up, excited motivated when you're writing this down that's why you're going to take a few minutes close your eyes and imagine yourself in the future and write those down it can be 10 it can be 20 it can be 3 it doesn't matter you have to write down what you've been doing and what you've accomplished number two is that you want to break your long-term big goals which you've done in the commit part the first part break it down into something more achievable so the vision that you've had it's broad it's big you know getting off of my medication or having a baby you know all of those are big goals but now you want to compress them break it down into monthly weekly and daily goals that you can actually accomplish so that are more attainable and achievable and quantifiable so that's where the smart goal setting comes in So SMART is abbreviated for specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-framed. So whatever your goals are, you want to be extremely specific. Break it down into something that's substantial. So getting off of your medications could be a great goal, obviously. But what medication do you want to get off of? Is it your high blood pressure medications for your hypertension? If that's what it is, then your specific goal for the month maybe would be controlling your blood pressure. So that's specific. Then you have to get more specific into weekly goals. What are you going to accomplish to actually let your blood pressure go down? So they're obviously, you know, less stressed, this and that. So that's where you get specific, but you have to measure it. Anything that you can measure, you should try to measure. So let me give you a few examples here. So an example of a monthly goal or a weekly goal could be, let's say, I will drink one less soda this week. Okay, if, if you are someone who drinks a lot of soda, cutting one less soda this week could be a goal for you, which might do, this is definitely specific, measurable because it's one less soda. It's action oriented because you're going to drink less. It's realistic because for you, maybe it's realistic. Not, it may not be realistic for everybody. Some people don't even drink soda, so it's not 
realistic for you then it's time frame this week now another better maybe uh example for a lot more people would be i'll just drink one soda on friday at 3 p.m every week for a month it could be that you know if you are someone who drinks a lot of soda and get getting a bigger goal would be maybe just drink one soda instead of one less soda uh one other really good example i like is i will pack my lunch every night for five weekdays at 9 p.m. before going to bed. Now, if you look at this example, it's definitely specific. A lot of people have a hard time packing lunch, especially in the morning. So it's good to have it done in the evening. So that's good. Now it's measurable because you're gonna do it five weekdays. So when the week is done, you can actually count and see if you've actually accomplished five that week. So you need a time frame like a 9 p.m. like in this example here because this will help you actually set your timer. Put an alarm or a timer to remind you at 9 p.m. that it's time to pack your lunch. Or another, I put the go before going to bed there as well is because you know sometimes maybe you didn't accomplish it at 9 p.m. You got busy, something happened. But before going to bed, you can remind yourself, oh, did I? And then you can go and do that. So that's important. Now let's look at a daily goal. An example of a daily goal could be I will reach 8,000 steps before my dinner time tonight. Now this is specific. It's measurable because you can measure your 8,000 steps. It's action oriented because you're going to actually walk those steps. It's probably realistic for you if you're actually accomplishing 8,000 steps generally or at least trying to if you're maybe even 7,000 steps, then you're close to your goal. Um, and then time frame by dinner time tonight. A fourth really good example could be I'll drink one liter of water before noon tonight. Now this might be realistic for you if you are someone who can actually do that. But if you're not even drinking one liter a day, if you're drinking like three cups, then you can change that goal to I'll drink one liter of water before going to bed. Whatever is realistic for you, as long as it's measurable, action-oriented, realistic in time frame and specific. Number three, create a motivational toolbox. To be honest, you may not be as motivated tomorrow as you are today. You might be the most motivated you'll ever be right now. Probably why you're actually watching this video. So take advantage of high motivation and think of all the things that are motivating you right now. Maybe it's this video, I hope. But think about something more. You want something tangible and physical that you can actually look at to remind you why you're doing whatever it is you're doing. So a really good idea, and I actually got this from another dietitian once. I was looking for that video. I couldn't find it. I really wanted to give her credit. But this is a really good way to do it. Have a box, get a box and put all the things that are meaningful to you that actually remind you of why you're doing all the things you're doing. It could be family photos, but better yet, it could be something like your wedding pictures. If you want to remind yourself to go back to the size you wear on your wedding day, maybe or your wedding dress, you know, if it has to be, or an old pant, you know, a pant that used to fit before, it doesn't fit anymore. You want to put it there in your box to remind you that this is where you want to be at. It could be anything, any, anything, or and hopefully many things that actually will remind you of things. You know, sometimes, you know, a lot of people who used to dance before uh, could put uh, things, um, related to the dance you know those dance clothes those dance shoes or anything that reminds you or cds of yourself old videos anything you want to put that in a box because there is going to come a time when you're not motivated and then you can go back back to that box open it up and look at it and remind yourself oh this is why i'm doing it you need that when when you're really motivated you're going to do that right now so that later when you have low times which you will have there's no doubt about it you just have to be prepared so look go back to the box and remind yourself why you're doing the things that you are doing and really it's up to you it can be as many things it could be even a tennis bat if you need to put it there 
you obviously get a bigger box, but you want to have a box dedicated specifically to motivate you to do the things that you're doing. So just like your motivational toolbox, you want a motivational playlist. It could be anything. It could be a YouTube, your podcast, an iPod, anything. It doesn't really matter where it is. What matters is what's in it. So you want to start compiling just like you were doing with the motivational box you want to start compiling things online you know it could be an online folder or a dropbox something where you actually put anything that reminds you that motivates you so it, so a lot of people sometimes i find this useful looking at celebrities working out maybe sometimes i actually find it really inspiring to look at um, people in dancing the stars or even watching shows like america's top model or something like that that motivates me I'm like oh you know i need to get myself in shape or i want to look like this or anything that helps you reminds you is what you want to start collecting put it in a playlist on a youtube channel or something just put everything together you can put music that inspires you anything that does that you want to do it right now number five is find an accountability partner you cannot do this alone. You may be able to start, but for you to keep motivated and reach the finish line, you will not be able to do it alone. You will need at least one other person, but usually a lot more people together with you on this journey. The partner you want is someone who can keep you on track while also keeping you motivated and also help you be aware of the choices you're making. I know for a lot of women, this can be really hard, especially if you are someone who's been told over and over again that you need to lose weight or, you know, people nag you and you don't, you kind of want to do it, but you want to do it secretly because you feel like it seems like you're doing it for them, but you actually want to do it for yourself. So sometimes you want to start off doing it secretly. I know a lot of women feel like that. I felt like that. But you've got, at least in the beginning, to find someone who's sympathetic or empathetic to you and is on your side. Let them know your plans. Let them know that you're thinking about it. This is what you want to do. These are your visions. Once you tell someone, then it's harder to take it back. And then you have one more reason to accomplish your goal. To actually get an accountability partner, I actually made a checklist for you that you can actually grab. If you download it, I'll give you the download link. It'll be in the show notes below. But you want to get an accountability partner, at least someone in your immediate network if you can. It could be a spouse, a partner, a family member, a close friend, a co-worker, anyone. But then eventually you want to expect expand your network because the more people you have the better but at least get the people who you live with on board with this as soon as you can get them because the sooner you have the emotional and physical support the faster it is for you to actually progress from one stage to the next it's also important for you to find different people who can help you do different things for example someone who can actually do exercise with you Maybe someone to help keep you on track of eating. Maybe someone else to actually watch what you eat because, you know, you might not go eat out with everybody. You want to find someone who can help you in all of these aspects. If you want to grab the checklist, you can do that here on my site on modestnutrition.com slash 10x4. Now, number six is eventually you want to branch out get a wider audience but you want to start sharing your goals and your achievements with others this is important you know how you see a lot of fitness app tell you to share your goals and your achievements with others there's a reason behind that it's because it works every time you set your goals and you share them it'll make it harder for you to quit admitting failure to yourself is so much easier than it is to admit to others so once you've committed your goal and then shared your goal out to the world you know on social media on facebook wherever it is you are now accountable not just to the people but to yourself because now you've put it out there in the world now you don't really have a way out 
it's basically working against you but in a way it's helping you number seven last but not least this part is very important almost everyone takes this really lightly but it may be one of the most important things that you'll need to do and that is to give yourself rewards you want to reward yourself each time you accomplish a goal which is considered significant to you so for example the goal that we set for water drinking one liter of water by noon may not be such a significant one unless you feel it's significant you have to give yourself a substantial amount of time whether it's two weeks or a month and by the end of the month if you've been doing this consistently then it's a time to reward yourself consistency is key and the only way for you to stay motivated enough to be consistent you have to reward yourself you have to attach every single mini goal with a reward so if you've packed your lunch for five consecutive days that's a good thing but is it reward worthy maybe not you want to keep doing that for another four weeks at least a month maybe and by the end of the month review your goals have you accomplished it more than 80 percent of the time or 100 percent of and if it's significant for you that you've accomplished it such so many times you have to reward yourself now the type of reward matters first of all it should not be food food should never be a reward and that reward should be something worth getting if it's not worth getting then why do you even want to work towards it? If you want to be motivated enough to actually accomplish something and change a habit of yours, then you have to, first of all, attach it to a goal with a goal or a reward, but the reward should be worth getting. So let me give you a few examples, something like watching a movie in 3D. But if you watch movies in 3D all the time, then that's not even a reward. I remember... Uh, when my sister-in-law actually took up a challenge to go to her yoga classes every single day for 30 consecutive days the yoga studio had this ca- this challenge going and they were going to give a reward but regardless of what they gave as a reward my brother actually gifted her a mini trophy and a medal and actually made it a whole celebration to achieving it and that's sort of what you want so if you have a partner for example you can act or a spouse you can actually ha- have them buy you flowers to celebrate the accomplishment of your goal isn't that a motivation enough isn't that something to look forward to now i'm not saying that you should depend on others or your partner or someone to gift you it is your responsibility and you must take it upon yourself to set rewards for each accomplishment and reward yourself at each accomplishment I know a lot of people do not do this, but it's very important because we need positive reinforcement. Changing habits are not easy. No matter how easy people make it look, they are not easy at all. And changing even one habit takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, and you know it better than anyone else. One of the reasons why weight loss is so hard and has a lot of negative connotations with it is because you do not get immediate gratification out of it. For example, if you are working out, you do not see the result immediately. Our brains, our body is wired to get inspired when we have immediate results. If you eat a piece of chocolate, you get immediate gratification because it tastes good, it feels good, and you're quickly excited but maybe cutting out sugars is not maybe a big motivator because you do not get an immediate gratification out of it that's why keeping a reward getting a positive reinforcement with every action is absolutely important even if the goal that you're trying to accomplish is not big in the eyes of others but if it's big for you if even packing lunch to work every day is a big goal for you because for many people it's not easy you know it's not easy to even pack lunch but if you can do it consecutively every weekday for one month that is worth the reward and you want the reward to be matching the effort so i have a long list of ideas for you on my website on modestnutrition.com slash reward dash yourself reward yourself so that's reward dash yourself 
you'll find a list of ideas of how to reward yourself. So remember with each account, each goal you've set, each mini goal, you need a reward that corresponds to it. So the bigger the goal, the bigger the reward. In conclusion, number one, you have to commit to a goal that is meaningful to you. So close your eyes and think of your future, where you want to be and what you're doing and write that down every single day as if you've already accomplished it. Number two, break everything down into small, mini, smart goals that are specific, measurable, and time-framed. Number three, put everything that you can think of in a motivational box. You can also put your list of reasons in the box as well. Also, number four, create a motivation playlist that inspires you and motivates you every single day. Number five, get an accountability partner. Get someone on your team on your side. Number six, share all your goals with the world. Number seven, reward yourself for every single mini achievement that you've accomplished. So here you go. These were the seven steps that will guarantee to keep you motivated for a long time. If you have found this information useful, please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and then share this with at least two other people in your life. Hopefully these will become your accountability partner very soon or maybe they are. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time. I hope to bring more useful videos for you in the future. So do let me know what you'd like me to post about next. Thank you and good luck. And remember, if you want to get the checklist of the accountability partner, then go and grab it right now at modestnutrition.com slash 10x4.